William, you, you're a young Australian. I get a sense, by the way, that there's a, a real demographic difference here. And I suspect that many people under 30, down to your age, actually are much more open to this idea of nuclear energy because they've read about and, and taken the time to, to find out that this is actually going to help in the global battle against climate change and global warming. 100%. Nuclear power is one of the only guaranteed pathways in order to decarbonise. 100% renewables is not proven. Not, not any country, no country has been able to decarbonise its whole economy based on Australia's risky current plan. We need to have nuclear power as an option in order to decarbonise. If we don't have the choice, like, let's be honest, we probably won't get to net zero and we won't be able to decarbonise. So that's why young people support it and, indeed, Australians more broadly support it. 60% of Australians, according to recent polls, including a majority of voters for the Liberals and Labor, support nuclear power. So it's up to politicians to realise that, I have to be honest, like, this fear campaign this time, it is not going to work. People are waking up to the facts. We're sharing facts and information through our campaign, Nuclear for Australia. We've got a team of the nation's leading nuclear experts helping share information. We were at a potential nuclear site today at Calide. That's why I'm in Gladstone this evening. Uh, and we were sharing facts. We did a live stream there uh, where we answered people's questions. So politicians need to really quickly realise if they care about facts and if they are so serious about, you know, not propagating disinformation, then they need to wake up to the fact that Australians expect better of them and expect a fact-based debate when it comes to nuclear power. William, we've, we've dealt with the, the issue of nuclear safety. What about the major criticism that the government seems to be using, and that is uh, cost and the amount of time it will take? Let's deal with cost. What about mm. this line that we keep getting thrown around that nuclear is the most expensive uh, alternative power source to what we're using currently? Well, I think there's been a lot of experts who have pointed out there are many flawed assumptions in the John Gen Cost report, including the fact that they incorrectly assume that a nuclear power plant would have a 30-year economic lifetime, when in reality, when you look at the global evidence, these nuclear power stations are going to last from 60 to 80 years or even over a century. So that's the first thing, because when you are having these nuclear power plants running during that time, you would have to be building out renewables every 20 to 30 years. So you're paying for that each and every time. And I think it, you just have to look globally. If nuclear doesn't stack up, why are there 50 countries around the world looking uh, to nuclear power for the first time? They know it works. They know it lowers electricity bills, and that's demonstrated all around the world. Even at COP28, 25 countries committed to tripling global nuclear energy capacity. If the, if the Prime Minister was correct that nuclear power did not stack up economically, then what is he going to say to all of those nations? What is he going to say to Emmanuel Macron, who at COP28 called on him to lift the ban on nuclear power and have nuclear power in Australia? How can he answer for, for those questions when everything that he says contradicts the work of nuclear experts and contradicts the global evidence? We're in for a long haul with this debate and you're doing a great job prosecuting the case. William Shackle, as usual, on a Friday night, thank you very much for your time.